Why are we taking so much time examining the tabernacle? Well, God describes the creation of the whole universe in about 50 verses. For the tabernacle, he takes 50 chapters. This world is just a temporary stage that God built one week. When he's finished with it, he'll dismantle it. Quote, you, Lord, in the beginning, laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain, and they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You'll fold them up, and they will be changed. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. On this stage, he is constructing a glorious home for himself, built out of redeemed people, living stones, and portrayed in this magnificent tabernacle. It's a collection of 3D prophecies, shaped in gold, silver, and bronze, decorated with hangings of blue, purple, and scarlet. The truth may be stated in black and white, but the full display of his glory requires every color. This tent was no flimsy affair. The curtains were placed over gold-covered acacia wood structures. Quote, Ten cubits shall be the length of a board, and a cubit and a half shall be the width. Exodus 26, verse 16. There were 20 boards for the south side, verse 18, and 20 on the north, verse 20, with six on the back wall, plus, quote, two boards for the two back corners. Verse 23, on the front, the curtain doorway was suspended with pillars. Some suggest the word karesh, translated board, should be frame, since it's estimated that a piece of wood that size, covered with gold, would approximate one ton. A frame would be considerably lighter and allow the beautiful design of the curtains to show through. Now, a piece of timber is very weak by itself, but gains strength by having a good foundation and by being tied to other pieces. So it was with the tabernacle, and so it is with God's people. What was the foundation under each piece? Quote, you shall make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards, two sockets under each of the boards, end quote. Exodus 26, verse 19. What? Silver laid in the dust? Yes, that's correct. And Christ laid his glory in the dust too, in order to redeem us. Where did the silver come from? There were 603,550 men of fighting age, each whether rich or poor, was to give, quote, half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary, an offering to the Lord. Exodus 30, verse 13. That's about a quarter of an ounce each, and was called, quote, a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. Verse 12. The total, quote, 100 talents and one 1,775 shekels, chapter 38, verse 25. There were 48 boards requiring 96 bases, plus four bases for the pillars of the veil. The silver given by the 600,000 came to five tons. Thus, each board rested on the ransom of 12,500 souls. D. W. Whittle wrote, No works of merit now I plead, but Jesus take for all my need. No righteousness in me is found, except upon redemption ground. The rest of the silver, amounting to 1,775 shekels, was to fashion the silver caps on the pillars of the courts. Imagine the one who laid himself down to be the cornerstone has also been lifted up to be the capstone. Some say these boards must speak of Christ, 
for they are fashioned from the same wood and gold as the ark. Yes, but now it is Christ displayed in his mystical body, being built together for a dwelling place of God, Ephesians 2.22. Only one son came from glory, but now he is bringing many sons to glory, Hebrews 2.10. We, like those boards, can now allow the beauty of the Lord to shine through us.